maybe jump ahead uh, a little bit to get you, if you want to be turning there. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit, but um, we're going to be in Psalms 51. And <clears throat> not to, I don't mean to, to beat a dead horse here, uh, and that's what it seems like to me a lot of times, but um, please pray for um, uh, Pastor Kyle and, and the elders because, you know, we've had, some, we've had to make some pretty difficult decisions um, this year, and uh, specifically over this COVID thing. And um, we may be technically somewhat forced to make some other decisions here shortly if things continue the way they are. So please, please pray. I mean, I know you guys are, but, you know, we, we, we just want to make the right decisions. And, you know, we don't want, you know, to, um, we just always want to do what God wants us to do. And so we need to, we always need your prayers for that. So. I have been dealing with this, uh, this issue that I'm going to bring today. I've been dealing with this for months now and trying to figure out how, how and learning this myself and dealing with this myself and, and how do I present this and how do I, uh, if I get the opportunity, how can I, how can I <clears throat> bring this forth? And uh, so I, I read a scripture that Paul um, Paul uh, wrote here in uh, Acts chapter 13, and Paul is speaking to, uh, of course, he's in the synagogue, and he's speaking to a bunch of Jewish people, and he's kind of giving them a, a history of, of Israel, uh, and, and he's witnessing, it's interesting, he's witnessing to these Jews, and he's using King David as an example, and he's really uh, respectful, and he really respects King David, but he's using it as a witness for Christ. And if you, and if you read, if you read on in that, read all in Acts chapter thirteen, you'll see how Paul used this to to minister because Jesus was a descendant of David's, and he used it to witness for Jesus. I just thought that was neat, but. But Paul uh, was lifting up David as being important to him, okay? I have another scripture. Uh, this, uh, Paul took this from, uh, by the way, he was quoting and using uh, 1 Samuel 13, 14. That's where he was, he was taking this. And uh, the story that I'm going to talk about today that happened, you can look that up. Uh, I'm going to summarize a little bit of it, and then we'll go into the lesson. But uh, I have another scripture, uh, 1 Kings 15, 3 through 5, uh, is another one. Um, this was during the time when Israel was a divided country, and uh, King uh, Abijam, Abijam was the king of, of Judah. And it says, in verse 3 of, of 1 Kings 15, it says, he... Uh, this king, uh, Abijam, he walked in all of the sins of his father, which he had committed before him, and his heart was not wholly devoted to the Lord his God, like the heart of his father David. But for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem to raise up his son after him and to establish, establish Jerusalem. Now, listen to this. Verse 5, because David did what was right in the sight of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he, God, commanded him, in, him all the days of his life, except, except for Uriah the Hittite. Okay. Now, there's a couple of verses, and if you, I love, I love David, he's my favorite in the Old Testament. He is my favorite. I love this guy. And, and we have some good things that are said about him. And if you read, you would see so many things that God used David to do with the nation of Israel. I mean, he was just an amazing king. And yet, 
Most of us remember the bad. Uh, he had a situation that wasn't quite that good. And I'm going to summarize it real quick. I'm not going to go all through it, but just for anybody that I think most of you know the story, but if you remember, <clears throat> David was king, and it says that while his <clears throat> armies were out fighting, he decided, well, eh, you know, it was not like him <clears throat> because he was usually... He was usually right there in the middle of it. He was the, he was the warrior king. Uh, and he decided to stay back at the house, you know? And, you know, if you know about idle time, what does I, what's that thing about idle time? It usually can get us in trouble sometimes. That idle time that we're thinking, eh, you know, I'm bored, you know? <laughs> anyway, that's kind of where David was. All right, he looks out, sees this beautiful woman. Um, guess what? She's married, and it's not his wife. He thinks she's beautiful. He has her brought to him. He sleeps with her. Guess what? She gets pregnant. Okay? So David's like, what am I going to do? So he calls, has Uriah, her husband, brought back. And says, I'm going to give you some R&R, &R, go home, relax a little bit before you go back. Uriah says, I'm not doing it. I'm, uh, Uriah was an honorable man. This guy was, whew. he said, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. My, my fellow soldiers are out fighting and dying. I'm, I'm not going to be back doing R&R. &R. <clears throat> and he would not go home. And David kept trying, kept trying, but he wouldn't go home. So he finally says, well, fine. He says, has him sent back. And he tells his captain, when, you, when he gets back there, you need to find the fiercest battle and send Uriah in it and pull your soldiers back. That's pretty low. Guess what happened? That's what happened. And Uriah was killed. You know, we look at that situation. And David, maybe, maybe he's thinking, well, guess what? Problem solved. Problem solved. I'll just take, if I want Bathsheba, I'll just go ahead and take her. It's my wife. Problem solved. Except for one thing. He didn't pull anything over God's eyes, did he? No. He called Nathan. God got, got a hold of Nathan and said, I need you to go and talk to David. He gave him a little story that he's told him a little story, a little parable, actually. And I was going to read it, but I'm not going to take the time. You can go back and read that. But what happened was that that when, the, when Nathan got done with the parable, David was hot. He was fired up and said, that guy needs, he said, he needs to be punished. We got to get that guy. We're going to take care of that. He had no right to do that. And Nathan says, David, that's you. The thing is, is that David didn't realize what have I done? What have I done? This man, David, an awesome warrior of God, he lied. He manipulated. He deceived. <clears throat> he committed adultery and he committed murder. Old Testament. Old Testament times. What did the law say about that? What's a punishment for that sort of activity? It's death. Hmm. And yet, we know, <clears throat> if you've read any of it, you know that God did have mercy on him.
David deserved to die. He deserved to die. But God had mercy on him. In Psalms 51, that's where we're going to be at today. We're going to see David's response to his sin. How did David respond to being that, that God? This is a psalm. Psalm 51 is a psalm or it's like a prayer. It's like a prayer that David has to God. And he's calling out because of his sin, because of what he had done. Keep in mind that, and one of my points is, is this. Keep in mind that David, the awesome king, and he was just a man. He was just, he was just a guy. He, he, he's, I love his character. I love who he is. But he's just like you, <coughs> just like you and me. No different. He, he had the same issues that we have. And this is how sin works, guys. You all know it. You know the old thing about <clears throat> if you tell a lie, then the next time you tell it, what are you going to have to do? There's one of two things. Either you're going to have to fess up and say, no, I didn't mean that. I, I wasn't telling the truth back there. I should have said that. It was wrong. I lied. Or what are you going to do? You're going to tell another one because you got to cover it up. And then you got to tell another one. Cover it up. Sin's that way. That's the way sin is, guys. That is the way it is. And if we look at David's life, we'll see that's how it was. If we, if we as believers in Christ, if listen, when we sin, if we do not take care of it quickly, it's going to grow. Why is it going to grow? Because it wants to be our master. When we were, before we were saved, it was our master. That's how we lived. It was our master. Whether we, you want to believe it or not, it was your master. When we became a Christian, Jesus became our master. We have a heavenly father who, who is our God. He is our master. But I'm telling you, sin wants to be our master. And sin became David's master. thing is, is that I will tell you firsthand that if you do not deal with your sin, it's going to become your master and you are going to do and you're going to say things that you didn't think were possible. I'm just telling you, it's going to happen. David found out. David found out. The thing is, is that, uh, and I, I hated, I hated this when I read this because, you know, I, I, I like to watch. Tim and I kind of have to kind of like to watch uh, Forty Eight Hours and those those mysteries, and because I, I like to figure out who did it. You know, I like to, I just kind of like to do it. And what amazes me is there's people that commit these crimes and they may not catch them for twenty or thirty years. These people have lived with themselves. For that long a time. Well, David, it says, I read, Psalms 51 didn't, didn't happen for almost a year. So David was there dealing with that. He had to deal with that. He was, or he was ignoring it. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure what. But it took that long. I don't know whether God was trying to be patient and just wait. David, you have something to say to me? We have something to do. We need to work on this. All right. <clears throat> Let's go to Psalms 51, verse 1 through 7. It says, Psalms 51, verses 1 through 7. It says, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out 
my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I have brought forth in iniquity, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will make me know wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. The first thing that David does <clears throat> is he basically just falls before the Lord and says, cleanse me, Lord. Uh, he just, he's just broken. <clears throat> he's humble before the Lord. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. Like I said, David's true punishment should have been death, according to, to, to the law. But he cried out to God for mercy. He knows, David knows, that he yielded his sin nature. And he willfully, listen, he willfully rebelled against God. Interestingly, we do that too. Maybe I should say I do that too. I don't want to lump you guys in there with me. You, know, you guys think about that. Verse 1. Verse 1, he's, he's coming before the Lord. He says, Lord, cleanse me. Or he says, blot, blot out my sin. And then he says, cleanse me. And then verse 2, he says, wash me of my sin. Verse 4, he says, I... We know that he sinned against Uriah and Bathsheba, yes. But who does he say he really sinned against in verse 4? He sinned against God, didn't he? Verse 5. He acknowledges by choice. Now listen, by choice, David's saying, yes, I did it. I did it. Nobody made me commit this sin. I did it on my own. But he's also saying... That by nature he's a sinner. Just like us. You know, we... <clears throat> I think if you ask worldly people, or, you know, or even our culture or whatever, they'll tell you, well, everybody's basically good. And then there's a few people out there. That, I mean, you know, you know, I'm not perfect, but, but <clears throat> I haven't killed anybody. You know? And, and, and that all people are basically good, they just have a little meanness in them. But that's not what the Bible says. Basically the opposite. You know. We're all lost sinners. We're all <coughs> we all deserve hell. But it's only by God's grace, just like he extended to David, that we can believe in him. David loved God. There is no doubt if you read about David, he loved God. He knew God's word. <clears throat> yet, yet, he deliberately lied to people. He deliberately lied to himself. And he tried to lie to God. I've been there, guys. I have been there. Verse 6, now David's asking for truth. God's wisdom. Where? In his innermost being. I'm going to talk about that here in the next school in a bit. We're going to talk more about that. Verse 7, he's asking God to ceremonially purify him according to the law. But we know that because of what Jesus did on the cross, that we are cleansed through his blood. Amen. We don't have to be ceremonially clean. Jesus did that for us by his blood. Jesus, or David, was king. And you know, if you stop and think about today, even, 
we have governments that are um, dictatorships, I guess you might call them. Those leaders do pretty much what they want, don't they? What are they going to do? What's anybody going to do about it? You know? North Korea, there's a good one. That's a good one. What are you going to do about it? You know? David was the king of Israel. He could do whatever he wanted to. And you know what? Who, who, knew, who, who, who knew the whole story? I don't know that anybody knew the whole story, except for David. Bathsheba knew part of it, but she didn't necessarily know that David had her husband killed. The armies, the captain and all that, knew that King David basically had Uriah killed, but he didn't. They didn't necessarily know about Bathsheba. He could have just said, I'm king. What are they going to do about it? Except that, I think, we see the heart of David. Yeah, he messed up. Maybe that's why I like him, because it shows he's not perfect. You know, he's such a great guy, but yet... He's human, just like me. And he messed up. He, he knew he belonged to God. And instead, he humbled himself before God. Psalms 51, we see he's just broken before God. He didn't, he didn't get arrogant. He didn't get boastful. He didn't get all cocky and say, what are they going to do? No, he broke down and said, God, what have I done? I have sinned against you. My God, I have sinned against you. Oh, that we would have that kind of heart. And he broke down, confessing his sin in this first section here, asking for mercy and forgiveness. This is one of the reasons I believe that Paul could say and that it was said about David that he was a man after God's own heart. He had the heart of God. He had that, that, that open heart that just was amazing. I just, you know, he messed up. He messed up, but he knew how to deal with it. And that's one of the reasons that I believe he, he was a man after God's own heart. And that's important. For us, it's a good example for us. When we sin, guys, I hope that we are not trying to be arrogant and making excuses before God. I hope not, because it's not going to work. Because he knows, guys, he knows us. And that is really important that we do that. And it was important that David did, but that's not the most important, I don't believe. Let's read the next section, verses 8 through 12. It says... <clears throat> Make me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10. Create, <clears throat> listen to this, this is our key verse. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12, restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. David came before God after what he had done, broken. He was just, I, I just, I, I just, uh, you know, just wanted to die. I'm guessing he just wanted to die, <clears throat> you know, realizing the guilt of it. But he came broken, and, and, repent, and he's in repentance. But this section, he says, here's the deal. <sighs> Has anybody ever confessed a sin to God, same sin more than one. All right, I will. I have. 
thought I repented of it. Hmm. Didn't. Find myself again. Come before God. Same sin. And again. And again. And again. It's not just good enough that we <coughs> that we humble and are broken before the Lord and ask God to forgive us. We have to be restored. We have to be restored. Something has to change. Okay? Or we're gonna keep we're gonna do it over and over again. He says in this section, restore me, God. Bring me back to your presence. <clears throat> Reinstate me. Bring me back and restore me, oh God. This whole situation with David affected everything about his life. Everything. And that's what sin does. It affects all of us. Every part of our life, guys. You think that it doesn't just affect you spiritually. We know that when we sin, it, it causes a rift between our relation, in our relationship with God. Until we deal with that. We don't lose our salvation. I'm not saying, but it causes a rift. It just does. And until we deal with that, that, that relationship we have with God is, is jeopardized, if you will, or it, it's strained. But it, it's going to affect you physically if you don't deal with it. That sin in your life. It's going to affect you emotionally. It's going to affect you spiritually. The key verse, like I said, is verse 10. David asked God to create in him a clean heart and a steadfast or an unwavering spirit. In the Hebrew, the word heart means the feelings. It means the <coughs> It means the intellect. It means the center of anything or the center of all. It's who we are. The heart. When he's, when he's speaking here, create in me a clean heart, he's saying me. He's talking about me. David, me. My heart. That's me. <laughs> David knew he didn't have a clean heart. He knew it. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done what he did. His spirit was fully, was not fully committed to God during that time. It had been. And all of us have those times when we're like, I've never been this close to God. And then there's other times where it's like, Lord, where are you? God, where are you? David knew that his inner person, his heart, was, yeah, that's where he got his joy. That's where he experienced joy in his heart. And the blessings and the excitement about knowing God. But you know what? He also realized that's where his trouble was. It's in his heart. His heart was not right. And he needed God to change it. To create in him a new heart. A clean heart. And only God can do that. I believe that. I believe there are things we can do to help. You know, we, we, we preach and preach and preach about God's word here. Got to be in God's word. Study God's word. Be in prayer, you know, before God. Allow the Holy Spirit to, to teach you God's word. And that's part of it, yes. But God's got to do a work in us, God. When our hearts are bad. He's got to do the work. Just like he did with David. David was broken before him and said, Create in me a clean heart, Lord. I know my heart's not right. I don't have a clean heart right now. I need you to change me. Listen to what Jesus says about the heart. <clears throat> I thought this was interesting. I took some scriptures out of Matthew. Matthew 6 21 says, for where, Jesus says, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Matthew 12, 34. For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. 
and, and my, my favorite here is uh, this one's uh, Matthew also it's 15 18 and 19 it says but the things that proceed out of the mouth come from the heart Jesus is talking about them he says not what goes in that does what what goes through the end of the mouth doesn't defile you it's not what he's, he says it's what comes out of the mouth he says four out of the heart come listen to this comes evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witnesses slanders come from the heart I sometimes don't have a clean heart. Verse 11, um, David says, and Lord, don't take the Holy Spirit from me. That's kind of weird, but not really. In Old Testament times, God gave the Holy Spirit to leaders, people, uh, and it wasn't uh, exactly like it is now, where we as believers receive, when we are accepted, we accept Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit at that time. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and with us. And he said that basically because if you remember, Saul, King Saul, was the first king of Israel. And he was right before David, and he sinned against God, was disobedient, he was, got pretty bad. God took the Holy Spirit from Saul. So David's going, oh no. Lord, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. So that's kind of what that, you know, David was a little bit worried, I think, but he was fine. <clears throat> God had mercy on him. But remember, us as believers, like I said, we... Uh, the scripture says that the Holy Spirit dwells with us forever. I, I want to challenge you before I finish up with the last little section here that and, and you know what? I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm the only one in here that, that uh, needs to take this to heart but that God would change your heart. That God would create in you a clean heart if you need a clean heart. I pray when I during my prayer time, I, I gotta tell you, for months now, I pray every time, Lord, give me a clean heart. I do. Seriously. Because I, I, I don't wanna I, I don't wanna I don't wanna fail God. And I know David didn't want to, but he got caught up in sand. And sin became his master there for a while, and he did some awful, awful things. And I, I just, we're all susceptible to that. If you don't take care of sin in your life, pray that God will give you a clean heart. And just remember that sin is one of those things of if you give it an inch, it's going to take a mile. That, that sort of thing, that's the truth. If you give it an inch, it's going to take a mile. And then uh, just to finish up now, so uh, verses uh, actually through, I think, 19, but I'm only going to uh, read you verses 13, 14, and 15, and I'll finish this up. So what we saw was the first section that David was broken before God. <coughs> he just, he was broken. And he humbled himself and said, God, cleanse me. Cleanse me of my sin. I repent. Then the next section he says, not only forgive me, but restore me. Ch excuse me. Change me. Change me so that I don't continue 
to live like I was. That I'm living that life of holiness that you've called us to live. And then in verse 13, 14, 15, he says, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praises. I like it. Verse 13, he says, Then... All of this. Cleanse me. Restore me. Why? So that I can tell others. So I can be your witness. That's nothing new, is it? That's not new to us. That's what, that's what, the, that's what the really <coughs> New Testament is all about. Is us reaching out. Reaching out to the lost. David once said, Lord, change me. Create me that clean heart so I can be that witness of your goodness, of your righteousness, of your holiness, of your forgiveness. You know, David, David did some bad things. I can't argue it, can't argue it. But he was a man after God's own heart. Amen. He humbled himself before God. <coughs> And he asked to be cleansed. He recognized that his heart was bad and needed it changed. And he said, why? For your glory, Lord. To be a witness for you and, and for your glory so that I can praise you. I love David. I love his story. I love this story. And uh, uh, it inspires me to to Take care of sin. Take care of it quickly. When you know you're in the wrong, take care of it quickly so that it doesn't grow. Because it will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this story of David. We thank you for that he was, we could see that he was just a regular guy. That he suffered through the same things that we do. We thank you that his example was that he didn't get arrogant, but he fell broken before you. And he asked to be changed. Lord, and I ask now that you would change us. Change our hearts. Give us all a clean heart, that we might be your witnesses of, of your greatness, of your awesomeness, of your holiness and righteousness. Father, we just love you today, and we just give you all of the praise, all of the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.